Hi, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. OK, cool. Uh, thank you so much for coming here. My name is Shreya Malvia. I work at Akamai as a software engineer on Infection Monkey. I've been with the project since about three years. So today, we're going to talk about your network, how Infection Monkey can benefit you, its open source journey, and what being open source really means. So let's begin with your network. This is probably what you've seen in your organizations. Every organization has something like this, you know, a diagram with systems connecting to each other. Just tells you how your network actually functions. But this is also your network. And believe it or not, this is what it really is. With you know, misconfigurations and security settings that were turned off three years ago for some silly reason and never turned back on, or just weak user passwords. So this, this is basically what all of it depicts. And all of this leads to a whole lot of this. So, you know, I mean, if you just imagine, what if these organizations just had some magical way of knowing how they were going to be attacked before it actually happened? You know, just some magical tool or like magic beans or something. I mean, that's okay. I'm sure you guys are thinking I'm rambling about something silly. But what I mean to tell you is that this is where Infection Monkey comes in. So what really is it? Uh, it's an open source adversary emulation platform that lets you quickly and easily validate your security posture. Great, great definition, lots of big words, but really, what is it? So Infection Monkey is a piece of software that behaves like malware, but it doesn't do any real world damage. And you can use this to find out what security flaws you have in your network and how you can and whether your security solutions are working like you expect them to. It's OK if you guys are still wondering what I'm talking about, because I have a really good analogy. So uh, I'm sure most of you are vaguely familiar with how biological vaccines work. Uh, scientists pick up the strain of virus against which they need to build a vaccine. They take out a fragment of it. They manipulate or weaken it. And that's what is injected into your body as a vaccine. And your body then learns how to fight it so that when the real deal ever comes, it knows how to protect, yourself, protect you. And that's how you're a vaccinated and healthy individual. Now, let's draw this parallel, but in computer networks. So malware behaves in a certain way. There's a certain kind of activity that it does. And Infection Monkey is basically just a weakened version of it because it doesn't do any actual damage. So when you inject Infection Monkey into your network, or if you, when you run it on your network, you get insights on where your network lacks. And you can use those insights to basically fix whatever security holes you have. And that results in a vaccinated, healthy network. So now that uh, you guys have a gist of it, let's get down to monkey business. So I'm going to tell you how Infection Monkey actually works. So Infection Monkey has two major parts. The first is the monkey island, which is the control server. This is where you can configure how you want the software to run. Um, you can see any activity that was performed by it. So you can cross check it with your event logs. And you get a well formatted report so that you can see what's wrong with your network. The second part is the monkey agent, which is the actual computer worm that will propagate in your network. And that's going to move from system to system, exploiting them. So uh, we don't have time for a live demo, but I do have some screenshots and a really cool video to show you guys. This is the configuration page in the monkey island. This is where you can choose whichever exploiters you want to test your network for what kind of payloads you want to run. You can simulate ransomware, crypto jacking. You can choose how you want the monkey to steal credentials on your systems, and a whole lot of other stuff. And if, if we've uh, recently released some feature that you don't have, you can just go to the plugins page, download it with the click of a button, and that's it. You're set. So once you've got everything installed and configured and set, you can go ahead and run the monkey. So here we're running it on the same machine on which we have the island installed. So uh, the green light basically means that an agent is currently running on this machine. And you see a bunch of machines spawning here and there. These are the machines that the agent was able to scan. A yellow line means that a machine was scanned. And a red line means that a machine was successfully exploited. Again, when you see green lights popping up, these are just agents starting on different machines. And if you see a gray line going back from a machine to the island, that basically means an agent was able to communicate back to the island. 
Okay, there's a blue line. That basically means that an agent running on a machine was able to communicate back to the island, but through one or more other machines. So this is pretty cool, because you can see how an attacker would move around in your network in real time. And once you're done with this, you can go, whoops. OK. If you want more insights, you can go to the security report, which is going to tell you um, in detail about how Infection Monkey ran on your network. So you can find which exploits specifically were successful, where credentials were stolen from, which services were found open on which machines, stuff like that. So um, yeah, this is really helpful because uh, you can verify that any security solutions that you have in place, whether it's antivirus, EDR, intrusion detection, anything that you have, they should technically be triggered by infection monkeys activity. So you can verify that they're working as you expect them to. And the findings that you get from the security report, you can use to look into your network and find out whether the things that you have configured in your network are actually protecting you like you think they are. And if not, then you can go ahead and fix them and protect yourself from any future attacks. This is a really great way of low interaction pen testing. But if you think about it, it's better in some ways because a pen tester would find one way to go through your network. But Infection Monkey or Adversary Emulation would uh, you know, give you a wider coverage of your network and tell you all of the different ways in which an attacker would propagate. So we, we have uh, some really cool features. We have ransomware cryptojacking, polymorphism. We have masquerading. We have some really cool exploits like zero logon and log for shell. And we recently just added RDP. And um, it, this, is, this is super, super helpful because a report uh, said that in 2022, about 65% of cyber attacks used RDP propagation. So if you use this on your network, this is actually pretty huge. You can find out. You can protect yourself, and you can save yourself a lot of trouble. And of course, there's also credential stealing, fingerprinting, network scanning, a lot of stuff. So you must be wondering how you can try it. Uh, you can go to Akamai's Infection Monkey homepage. The QR code on the right will uh, lead you there. Or if you want to dive in directly, you can go to Git the GitHub release page for Gardico Monkey, and uh, you can find it there and install Infection Monkey for your system and try it out. And for the ones who want to save the world, you can contribute to Infection Monkey because you're technically saving the people who will go on to save the world and you know, focus on important things like saving lives or climate change. So you can always visit our GitHub, uh, find any open issues, pick them up, work them. You can always reach out to us on GitHub or Slack. We're pretty responsive. Um, and you can also just try out Infection Monkey, try to break it. Tell us about any issues that you find. And if you don't want to do that on GitHub, you can just join our Slack. Again, the QR code on the right leads to that. And you can give us any kind of feedback there. We, we love user feedback. Um, we've actually recently done a lot of work to make it easier for new contributors to join. And I, I'm going to give you an example of this. So back in 2020, some of you may remember about a very crazy vulnerability, which was nicknamed Zero Logon. So this was basically um, an, uh, a vulnerability in Windows, specifically NetLogon's cryptographic authentication scheme, which would let an attacker bypass authentication and gain administrator level privileges. In simpler words, somebody could change your password without having to know the older password, the original password, and they could lock you out of your system. So that's, that's pretty crazy. Someone could wreak a lot of havoc on your network. And we wanted our users to be protected from this. And we decided to add it as an exploitation method in Infection Monkey. But back in 2020, our code was really messed up. It was very hard to understand, so much so that this one exploiter took us about two months to get merged. It, was, um, it also had a lot of undefined boundaries. We violated every single solid principle. and. Uh, just as an example, here's one function that we have. This class is called report service, and this function is called get exploited. But what this function does is it directly queries the Mongo database that we had to find out what was being displayed in the map on the front end so that it could use that data to um, update the UI with new data that it just received. I know. We're all thinking the same thing. 
Our code was also very, very hard to change. Just to add one exploiter, you had to understand how all of the different parts and pieces worked. So you know, you had to add the title, you had to update an enum somewhere. And the title, by the way, already exists in the exploiter code. Then you had to like copy paste some function and reference it. I don't know why this isn't loading. But anyway, there was, there was a lot of repetition. There was a lot of repetition. Um, here's some more examples of that. And uh, you know, I mean, it's very tedious to add something like this. So everything was basically on fire. And while working on zero logon, the two months, this is how I felt. So of course, we realized we had to do something about this. This, this wasn't right. Um, and two years and counting, we're still working on this. But we've uh, made it really, really easy to add an exploiter now. So for example, let's say you want to add an SSH exploiter. This is all that you would need today. Uh, the source directory is obviously your actual Python code, your actual exploiter code. You have configuration options in one file. You have things like the title, description, target operating systems in your manifest, and of course, your dependencies for the plugin. And once you have this in place, all you got to do is pack this into a tar file, upload it to your monkey island, and you're good to go. What's also really, really cool about this, although it's still a work in progress, is that um, we, we're splitting out. You, so you won't even have to set up Infection Monkey's development environment if you want to build a plugin soon. Uh, we're going to split out all of the code that you need to do that into separate packages so that if one day you wake up and you think, I want to write a plugin for Infection Monkey, all you have to do, you have to like pip install three packages, and that's it. You're good to go. You can get to work. And then, of course, package it, upload it, and it's going to run on your network. Of course, if you want this publicly available, you can reach out to us, and we can include it officially in the Infection Monkey ecosystem. So. Uh, all right, so we added an SNMP exploiter earlier this year after we had all of this in place. And if you look at the dates closely, it took us like less than two weeks to do this. So this, this, it's really cool because when an, uh, you know, a vulnerability comes out, everyone rushes towards it. So if we can get something out this quickly, if we have the community members write us something for something crucial this quickly, we can actually help protect a lot of people. OK, now the, the reason that I am uh, telling you about op um, Infection Monkey's journey is that I, I want to move ahead to another topic, which is the essence of open source, but from a developer's perspective. Last time I used this meme, I promise. But really, so uh, since you guys are sitting at an open source conference, I'm assuming a lot of you have contributed to or have tried to contribute to open source projects. Um, so open question to everybody, how many times has it been that you've found a project that you're excited about, you, you found an issue that you want to work on, but then it's just so hard to set up the development environment that you just feel like giving up? OK, a few hands. How many times has it been that um, you finally set up the development environment, but uh, you get into the code base, and you just think, I'm not going to spend two weeks on bad code? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people, actually. I know I've, I've faced it a lot of times. And sometimes it's just low code, uh, low quality code. Sometimes it's just tremendously confusing with no documentation or no comments. And that's, that's pretty frustrating. And I mean, technically, you are open source. But if it's so hard for a contributor to get into your project and try to do something with it, is it really right? Are you really embodying the essence of open source? Um, OK, so GNU, has, GNU states that there are four essential freedoms for free software. You can run the program as you want to. You, you should be able to change it how you want to. You should redistribute copies. And you should be able to uh, distribute modified versions. However, they also have an article which says that usually open source projects don't have barely have any kind of collaboration. They have like one person who is maintaining and releasing a really old project. So uh, let's look at another one. We, so Open Source Initiative is a nonprofit that you know, kind of sets the standard for open source. Uh, they, their mission statement says that software, open source software should harness the power of distributed peer review. So the essence of open source is that along with being free, software should be 
such that anybody from anywhere should be able to use it, collaborate it, and uh, you know, redistribute it however they want to. But in order for somebody to do that, the project needs to be, the code needs to be of a certain quality. And it needs to be at a level where it actually invites users and contributors to make changes to it, to make it more powerful, to make it more reliable. So, I mean, I, with this, I, I want to once again bring it back to Infection Monkey and tell you guys how we've done a tremendous amount of work to make it truly open source. And I'm really proud of how we, we, we're not just following the law of open source anymore, but we're also incorporating the spirit of it. And to anybody out there who maintains or regularly contributes to an open source project, I urge you to think if your project is really embodying what open source means to convey collaborative software and community-built software. Uh, I'd like to leave you with that thought today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I, I hope you learned something new today. And we, we don't have time for questions, I think. But uh, yeah, there's another thing going. That's OK. OK, questions then. In the list of attacks you mentioned about mm -hmm. the brute force where you specifically mentioned the RDP. Yeah. So like, is the tool also uh, working on simulating that attack or it's just detecting whether it's uh, uh, no, brute it, force free? It carries out the attack. It carries out the attack. Yeah. OK, fine. Thank you. How is it different from the scanners, whether it is ideas or vulnerabilities? Scanners, um, scanners or just uh, tell you whether something is wrong with, I mean, one, they have no hopping. They're only going to find what's wrong with the machines that it can scan immediately when, when you run it on a machine. Uh, this thing will actually carry out um, attacks and payloads, and it'll propagate across your network depending on how many hops you want it to. Plus, scanners do not trigger any security solutions. This thing actually runs like an actual hacker on your network. So that technically should trigger other system, like antivirus and stuff too. So you can test that you've got a lot of stuff installed, but is it actually working? OK, so how do you ensure it is, um, you know, they're actually exploits. How mm -hmm. do you ensure that it does not harm or it does not you know, infect the network itself? Um, we have safe exploits. We have some unsafe ones, which you know may not be reversible by Infection Monkey because of certain settings. So, like I just told you about zero logon, that thing actually changes a user password. So we've clearly stated that um, it it may cause damage and only use it at your own risk. But we have most of our exploits are safe to use. They're not going to change anything about your network. Will they go through a, a, a certain QA process to end before it gets released to the Yeah, community? of course, we test it. OK. You said that it was performing an exhaustive search of different ways in which you can gain access to different servers. That uh, clearly must come with some sort of performance uh, impact, right? Like, I think companies run security tests on, like, uh, some sort of regular basis. Like, they probably have this running, like, every week or, like, maybe some, like, really security-heavy firms run it on, like, uh, every uh, time at midnight or something. So this probably, like, performing such an exhaustive search would be very performance-heavy, right? I mean, uh, what is, is there, like, a, have you guys benchmarked that? And does it scale for, like, companies with larger number of servers? Um... It, it's not really a problem because you have an agent running specifically on systems, and they don't take up that much RAM when they run. They, they, so an agent on a system will only scan immediate systems next to it. So I mean, it doesn't really hinder any work if someone is working on it. It doesn't really cause any performance issues. OK, cool. I think that's all. All right. Thank you again, everybody. I hope you guys learned something new. And if anybody would um, like to discuss anything about Infection Monkey or you have any other questions, you can always find me outside.